Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 1986's Iron Eagle. Full disclosure, I've seen this movie probably a couple of times. More times than mm -hmm. I'd like to admit that I've seen it. Uh, but I haven't seen it in a long time. And I just remember from the last time I saw it going, this doesn't stand up. It didn't stand up 20 years ago. Spoiler no. alert. Um, but yeah, uh, whoo, this was, this was a tough one. This was a tough yeah, one. Yeah, this was, this was just all the way around. What? <laughs> You're going to well, do let's, what? <laughs> let's get into this one. And before we do, this one was a PayPal request. Um, mm -hmm. so this one jumped to the front of the line and congratulations, y'all. This is what you get this week. Um, yes. And before we get into it, uh, if you want to follow me or Corey on Twitter, you could follow me at Junior D's. You could follow Corey at Idle Poncho. And uh, any anything for the viewers before we get started? Uh, a preview of what's to come. So maybe if uh, you uh, uh, are less than impressed with Iron Eagle, uh, we do have in the Halloween spirit, uh, Carrie coming up, the original 1970s. Three version? I forget when it was made. But yeah, Carrie's coming up uh, next week, followed by um, It, the remake, which I'm excited about because it's too. only part one. They only said part one. They didn't say part two. So we don't have to review that dog shit. And uh, then somebody has a real hard on for Jonathan Brandis because uh, we're rocking out uh, sidekicks and ladybugs back to back. <sighs> Ooh, all right. Yeah, it's going to be a rough two weeks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. all PayPal requests, so please continue. Uh, we're loving it. This little experiment of ours is working quite well and uh, allowing us to say, hi, YouTube algorithm. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> we appreciate it. Keep them coming in. We're loving it. And yes. uh, if you were expecting Blown Away, we did have that queued up. We had previewed that uh, as an upcoming movie via PayPal. Uh, the person that requested that actually asked to have their uh, money refunded. I don't know why. I didn't ask questions. I said we'd still do it. Um, you know, we had already scheduled it, and they very politely said, no, it's not about that. They just needed the money right now. So money went back to them. Blown Away got scratched uh, at their request, and uh, we're moving forward. All right. Yeah. And uh, going back to the YouTube algorithm, um, please share the uh, the reviews, uh, like, subscribe. I'm normally not that guy. Hey, bang the like button. That's not me. Um, but yeah, go ahead and bang the like button and subscribe and the bell and all that happy stuff. Um, so that maybe, just maybe, YouTube will go, hey, these guys are cool. And uh, there you go. But let's yeah. get and into if the oh, uh, it. Sorry, if the science of algorithms is a little too much for you, kind of like it was for Congress this week. Uh, basically, what we're saying is YouTube is trying to steal our gerbs. They're not promoting <laughs> us at all. They take our jobs. Yeah. 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 So Iron Eagle 1986. This film stars the eternal Louis Gossett Jr. As Colonel Charles Chappie Sinclair, Jason Gedrick as Doug Masters, David Suche or Suchet, so I don't get killed by people's uh, my pronunciation of things, uh, as the Minister of Defense or Colonel Nakesh of the nameless, faceless country in the Middle East, uh, yes. and Tim Thomerson as Colonel Ted Masters. Tim Thomerson, one of the best <laughs> names ever. I just dude, you, I, you know how I feel about alliteration. <laughs> Having it in your name just pisses me off to no end. Oh uh, yeah. <sighs> so let's let's dive right into this. Um, so Ted Masters, played by Tim Thomerson, is flying. <laughs> Quit saying his fucking name. We get it. Is flying a reconnaissance mission over some nameless faceless middle eastern country uh masters and his wingman are shot down 
And then Masters is captured and held prisoner by that country's Minister of Defense, because that's his only name in the credits. Yes. It, it's and, not and even it's it's Colonel Nekesh, I believe. He says it a couple of times during the movie, but they failed to put it in the credits. Cool, whatever. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't give uh, give his name during his uh, dogfight conversation with <laughs> Young Masterson. But anyway, yes. we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, this, as far as a POW situation is concerned, this is pretty nice. Like you see throughout the movie, like they just kind of rough them up in the tummy a little bit with their fists. <laughs> and then they're just like, that's enough for today. He's being executed tomorrow. Let's give him a last meal. Like as far as a POW situation is concerned, this guy's basically staying at like a motel six. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And and we also see at the beginning of this, uh, Doug Masters, Colonel Masters' son. He's a high school senior about to graduate. He lives on his father's base with his mom and his younger brother. Now, I'm going to break from this because I don't know if this is a, a, a strictly 80s thing, <sighs> but why in every 80s movie is there always a young prepubescent horny as hell kid in every 80s movie there's always like yes. the younger brother who's like i need to nut and nut as quick as possible like yeah, i don't I, I don't understand that whole thing and it's not like it comes back later it's literally right at the beginning he's on the phone with some junior he looks like he's in seventh grade and he's like yeah no i told her i'm a junior and yeah, everything's cool. And and what? She's going to touch your, your tiny little wiener later? No, buddy. Yeah, I don't uh I don't understand this cliche at all. I fucking hate it. The borderline genius pseudo witty doesn't add anything to the fucking point of the plot, brother. Is so stupid. I just immediately when they come on and he's like, "Man, Little brothers, I want to pound them. You know how they are. Like, get the fuck out of here. They should have treated. Just... They should have treated this kid like the sister on Family Matters and just cut him out of the script completely. Yeah, pretty much. And he's supposed to represent like he's the cool brother because FYI, the soon to be graduating high school brother wears jackets with his Iron Eagle gang emblem on the back of it. And has a clubhouse where yes. they regularly meet. So I think I, I think the sixth grader pretending to be a junior has got a leg up on this entire crew of fucking dorks. I think so. I think so. But Doug also has aspirations to join the Air Force. And while hanging out with friends, Reggie, also known as Lamar from Revenge of the Nerds, and Tony, also known as Styles from Teen Wolf, he gets a letter saying that he's been turned down for admission to an air academy. Cool. And he gets into a scrap here with Notcher. Notcher and his crew are harassing the girl, uh, master's girlfriend while she's driving. I'm like trying to run her off the road and shit. Yeah. To where she crazily uh, like has to turn into the A&W where everybody is hanging out. What the fuck? And then we go to later find out, like, not only do you like running women off the road because it's fun, you get into this race where you guys, like, fucking jack up the dude's uh, oil pressure. Like, you take off the oil cap in his airplane. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. Like, this, that th shit is insane. You're like fucking when you with first, an airplane? Yeah, when you first see him, he just seems like the normal 80s tool bag that they throw into every one of these movies as, right. you know, just, oh, he's got problems at home and he takes it out on other people. Cool. Um, but then he challenges him to, I don't know, the Black Snake Moan race or whatever the fuck it's called. I wish and, this was Black Snake Moan. <laughs> so, where he challenges people to race him in an airplane while he's on his dirt bike through the mountains of wherever the hell. 
And Which also, hey, reminder, it killed the fucking Bates kid or whatever his name is, but they had yes. to say that 13 times. <laughs> Why they're yes. going, oh, there's the mountain that killed the kid. Hey, just like that kid. Yay, are you that kid? It's like, shut the fuck up about the kid, especially while I'm doing the thing. Quit yes. mentioning the guy that died doing the same thing I'm yeah. in the middle of doing. That's what happened to the Branson kid, all right? You're coming up on Devil's Face. Wait, Jimmy Branson bought it. And here's my question now. Okay, so Notcher and the boys have decided to unscrew the oil cap and fuck with his oil pressure, in which case he has to either lay in the plane or he'll crash if he's not this exceptional pilot. Yes. And I know Chappie at, is fucking with Doug's plane too, and he's telling him, like, oh, this is what killed the yada yada kid. But did it? Or did Notcher and the boys unscrew his cap too and fucking kill him because yeah, this never sure. gets mentioned again like yeah. not sure gets punched in the face and it's like hey we're even now for the attempted murder of me yes exactly i'll see you around and he does not exist for the rest of this film yep i don't like, understand the point other than to demonstrate that doug's a good pilot and they do that again when he's having the flashback of him and his dad and him kind of hijacking his dad's plane yes which that piece, cool, keep that in the movie. This whole yeah. snake, river, devil, dick, mountain race doesn't need to be here. Like, no. this whole thing could be deleted from this movie and save you a good 10 minutes, basically. Doug then gets taken back to the base where they inform him of his dad's situation, that he's been taken hostage and whatever. He's obviously upset, as you should be, Mm -hmm. So upset, in fact, that he storms all over the base into restricted areas to get answers. And this base has got to have the worst security in the entire country. They took all the like the dregs of the military and just threw mm -hmm. them all into one base. <laughs> they really did, dude. This is by far the most pro-communism <laughs> pro Russia fucking movie from the 1980s that ever existed because this makes the American Air Force yep. look like fucking dog shit. <laughs> yes, it does. Like, our idea of the Air Force is like, look at the paper airplane I built. Whee! It made it 50 yards. We're Air Force. This looked horrible for them because yeah. these kids make these officers and like, People handling highly classified intelligence look like the biggest fucking idiots that yeah. have ever existed on the planet. Now I'm going to get my tip in the ringer if the general catches me showing you this stuff. So keep your mouth shut. And Doug here finds out all of the, like every single stitch of classified information that the U.S. government isn't running a mission to save his dad. Instead, they're settling for diplomacy, which isn't good enough for Doug because fuck diplomacy. We need oh, bombs hey. and shit. Don't worry. As Lamar told us, Ray Gunn is on it. Why you think they call him Ronnie Ray Gunn? This was the worst, like as far, and, and I get it. A lot of these, you know, military war movie type deals. Um, they're very pro military pro go USA and, mm -hmm. That's cool. Whatever. Every country's got their own version of this. This is just a bad version of all of those other movies, like Red Dawn, as, a, as an example. This is mm -hmm. just a worse version of that. You know what well, I yeah, mean? Yeah, because Red Dawn, like we're just gonna we're gonna skip to the fucking end here. Red <laughs> Dawn, they're fighting for their fucking country. Yes. Right? Yes. They're fighting for their land, their freedom, their country. End of the fucking story. This is about a fucking privileged, spoiled fucking white kid hijacking the entire United States Air Force in order to rescue his father. Yes. And literally at 18 years old is committing genocide because <laughs> the amount of people he has to kill in order to get his father at 18 is yep. insane. And the only reason he will not go fucking insane is because he had the benefit of doing it from a fucking plane and he gets to pretend like it's a fucking simulated game. Yes, absolutely. That's it. And absolutely. I'm not promoting pilots or anything like that. I'm just saying an 18-year-old kid 
should never be in this situation unless, of course, he's white. <laughs> because that is the only way he gets away with half of this shit. Um, he has to be white, and he has to have one of the most gorgeous mullets of all time. This mullet on this oh. kid's head of hair, it was perfection. Oh, yo, his hair's dope. There's no <laughs> denying that. <laughs> I'm just but, saying that this whole fuck, the entire plot and everything that has to be done in order for him to rescue his father. Uh, yeah. He didn't give a shit about anything. No. At all. No, talk about he tunnel was, vision. Yeah. But he is just all, and then it's like and we, dad got captured. I'm going to get him back. Fuck all of you. <laughs> and we see this because while at the prom or the dance or whatever, he finds out that this nameless country in the Middle East, you know, brown people have taken his dad and have sentenced him to death in three days. Hi, kids. Uncle Corey here. Uh, if you're ever caught yourself into a foreign country where you've been sentenced to death by a uh, kangaroo court, uh, you're not getting three days. No. They're going to fucking shoot you yeah. on sight. This End is the, the nicest discussion. country this ever. America. Yeah, this guy's got like six appeals. Like Robert Shapiro <laughs> was flown in to defend him. This is, you know what? <sighs> you know how I know that this is, what, whatever nameless, faceless country this is, this is how I know that they're nice people. Okay? okay. And they are going to give him three days. They might give him two weeks until they hang him or whatever they decide to do. Yeah. Um, because if you notice, when they show the, the kangaroo court, the military, the minister of defense or whatever, he's smoking a Swisher sweet. Just <laughs> FYI, that's the nicest man in the world. Okay. Well, yet, and they won't execute him because they need him to sign a confession. You've already condemned him to death. <laughs> what yeah, the what fuck you... point does a sign confession... Forge the fucking signature if you have to. Are you crazy? This whole, uh, this Fakakta fucking country <laughs> deserved to get blown up. Okay? So, now uh, after this, after the prom, right? Now it's time to jump into action and take matters into my own hands. And then he goes... Second. We can't skip over the prom. Because I think if, if you're not going to do it, I have to. I okay. have to steal an Armando. Don't do that. Hi, kids. If you only have two black people at your school and it's prom, don't encircle them and watch them fucking perform a choreographed dance just for your uh, amusement. Just <laughs> FYI. That was the weirdest shit. They're panning around through everybody in the audience and it's just like, holy shit, the rumors are true. They can really dance well. Like, my God, what the fuck is happening here? The two <laughs> fucking black kids in the school have to fucking perform for you. I'll be honest. I was, I, my head was still spinning from all the shit that happened leading up to the prom where I, I don't even think I was really paying attention to what was actually going on at the, at the dance or whatever. Mm -hmm. All the, the next thing my, my eyes and my brain saw was they were in like the locker room talking about the three days till your dad's dead. And <laughs> Lamar is sweating profusely everybody else is dry and i'm like why is he sweating so much like i think i just glazed over during like the the actual dancing part <laughs> i just noticed that he was sweating like a well, motherfucker you know why he was sweating because he looked around and realized he was the only black dude in the crew and they're about to commit fucking treason time to jump into action time to take matters into my own hands so he goes to see chappy who he's known for all of 10 seconds to yep. see if he will help in rescuing his father in a highly illegal mission to steal fighter jets to fly to the Middle East. And when Chappie wisely says, no, he goes, oh, you're a fucking coward. Yes. Hi, kids. Uncle Corey here. If anybody is ever wearing a uniform of any kind, like military, <laughs> don't fucking call them a coward. Yeah, probably you're not a, a good fuck, idea. You're a fucking idiot if you do that shit. Let's just clear the yeah. air. So here's the other thing. It's like, let's go against the State Department, the federal government, possibly go to jail forever or die to rescue my dad. What do you say, Chappie? And Chappie, as he should, 
tells Doug to kick rocks. Doug and you know, and his friends, the band yeah. of misfit toys of the military children, start going all over the base to help him gather intelligence on this you know nameless Middle Eastern country. He goes back to Chappie with the info. And then Chappie's like, yep, I've been working on this in the in the basement of my trailer park home. And he decides to help Doug all of a sudden. Conveniently, they've given him three days before the uh, execution. Yes. Thank God, because that's exactly how long it takes to plan this mission. And OK, get there. so I, I have I have a couple of questions here. OK, mm -hmm. because we have a series of scenes after this. Right. We have. Chappie doing his best Fonzie impression, kicking the jukebox on and actually playing some decent fucking music. And we get a montage of Chappie and Doug making plans to save the day. And then Doug finds out, right, that they have three days mm -hmm. to, to save his dad. And they get all the shit they need from the friends, right? Combing through mm -hmm. the, the military base. They fool every military person that they need to get into restricted computers, et cetera. They need to come up with a plan that's worth a shit, right? Not just like drawn up Madden plays. Like they actually need a, a, a good plan to, yep. to rescue his father and then execute said plan in three days. And not only that, Chappie hasn't seen this motherfucker fly. He saw him fly a Cessna. He hasn't seen him fly a jet. So now he's got to take this dumbass and do a, a, a test flight where Doug needs music to help him hit target. Like oh, this whole thing is ridiculous. Absolutely, utterly ridiculous. This movie could have parenthetically be titled God, Dad, I know. Like, just what this entire attitude is. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And yes. what's even more ridiculous is, if, if it could get there, the night before they're supposed to leave, Chappie and Doug have this, like, heart-to-heart -heart about the mission, and Chappie shows him the pictures of, you know, pilots that he's flown with and they're all dead. And I don't like to share my feelings, but we're going to kind of sort of, you know, alpha male the feelings thing through. And they talk about Chappie's past. And now all of a sudden Doug's like, cool, I'll go to bed. Thanks. You know, thanks for the story, Uncle Chappie. I yeah. was sleepy. <laughs> but Doug and Chappie fly out on the mission the next day. And they reach the coast of the nation and they engage in like air to ground combat with the country's like defenses, like the outer defenses. Chappie's plane gets hit and he crashes. And before he goes down, Chappie tells Doug to continue the mission and play the tape that he's prepared for him. On the tape, Chappie gives him encouragement and things and tells him to stay focused and he'll be fine. He Thanks, Tony Robbins. He doesn't but, give him encouragement and things. He literally takes him step by step through what is about to happen. He's like, all right, and in uh, three, two, one, you got about six MIGs behind you now. Uh, you got about 74 degrees out and sunny. Winds going north by northwest, about five knots. Looking good all around. Looking good. You're going to have about 450 pounds worth of fuel. It's like, get the fuck out of here. If they didn't pick us up on radar through the mountains, then there's something they may not know. How many planes? They won't know how many fighters there are. They're never going to think it's just you. I think Chappie's plane was just fine. But he got into the shit and was just like, I ain't fucking dying for this. And he just turned the fuck around and ditched out. <laughs> I think you're right. He's I not think fucking right. stupid. He took he took a look at just everything that was starting to happen and be like, this is a clusterfuck. <laughs> Deuces. Lost turbine. Oh, my God. So yeah, can we talk about the MS-DOS fucking computer screen that has to tell us what's happening? Yes. That shit did not exist. Well, I was I was literally because, again, I don't I don't do research. I don't know from military. I don't know what the inside of a fighter jet looks like. I was uh, I was going to ask in general 
if if anybody that has been in the military or sat in one of these things, is there really? And it's it wasn't even like an MS DOS screen. Do you remember like the those old um those old typewriter, like the, but they had like the little screen, but it was one tiny screen. So you can only see three words. Like that's what it was. It was just like a ticker that would go across. (laughs) Oh yeah. dude. When they start to play the thing went, hello, David, would you like to play a game? Shall we play a game? How about global thermonuclear war? Wouldn't you prefer a good game or chess? I'm surprised the computer screen on the fighter jet wasn't just giving us exposition the entire time. Yep. <laughs> so, did your wife ever recover from that affair, Mr. Masters? How are the kids? So, did Billy ace his science test? Is he still dating that junior chick? Doug reaches the base, begins to lay waste to the entire area, and yep. takes out, you know, the, the missiles and artillery And then Doug contacts them by radio, bluffing by saying that he's part of this bigger squadron that has come to free his father, and Nikesh won't meet his demands. So Doug starts dropping bombs on nearby uh, on a nearby oil refinery. He's like, "Yeah, this this is the one thing that made me laugh because I'm like, this is how you know he's 18 because he's like, yeah, take that, that'll cost your country millions of dollars," and I'm like. It's going to cost us too. The oil prices just shot through the roof. President what, Ray, President Reagan is really pissed right now. Okay? President Reagan, the entire world just got butt fucked for Doug Masters and his daddy. Fuck this. As soon as I watch that, I'm like, "Oh, that's why it's 351 a fucking gallon right now." I was going to I was going to say Doug Masters had to rescue his dad. <laughs> Chef, I wish you could see this. Looks like there'll be important oil this year. I, I understand, like, one, yes, you got to call a bluff. Like, if your bluff gets called, you got to go big. You claim yeah. you're going to do some big shit, you got to do some yeah. big shit. But, but, you just fucked the entire world and yeah, are welcome home a hero. That's the nuclear option you chose. Like, you oh, went yeah, from, this- I, could, I could bomb these select targets or I could choose the nuclear option, which is ruin the world's economy by destroying an oil refinery. Cool. Nikesh then releases Colonel Masters, he allows him to drive to the end of the runway alone in a Jeep. And Doug is about to pick up his father when a sniper shoots Colonel Masters in the shoulder, which again, okay, here's a don't do that from me. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, anybody who like holds a position of power in the military. When you hire snipers, don't hire horrible blind snipers. <laughs> he is literally ordered to kill this guy and he shoots him in the shoulder. It was like he shot him without a scope. He was just trying to aim down the barrel from 200 yards away. You got a scope, you're a trained sniper, and you miss that horribly? Technically, if you want to get into it, technically, that bullet had to ricochet off the fucking runway and shoot up into his shoulder, because that fucker was pointed at such a slant on that fucking roof. There's no way it was getting hit. Anyway, besides the point, my favorite part of this scene, which I'm glad you picked this up, because my favorite part of this scene is the guy's like, don't shoot until my command. You are the worst military person I have ever met in my life. He hasn't even landed the plane yet. Wait until dude is out of the plane. Yes. What are you, the end of the fucking movie. <laughs> Dad, I'm here. Come on, let's get on the plane. Plop, plop. Two fucking bodies on the ground. Exactly. I'm going to fucking Baba Kanush for dinner. Doug then firebombs the runway to cover his landing. He helps his dad get on the plane. They take off. Doug then engages Nikesh in the air because he's a pilot and he belongs in the air. I'm a combat pilot, Will. I belong in the air. This ain't Independence Day, motherfucker. Stay. Get your pilots that have actually flown in the last, I don't know, four or five years to get up there and and do their thing. After a brief dogfight, Doug blows up his plane 
He orders a major down. If you don't know dick about anything in the military, that's an officer. Typically, your officers are some of your better pilots. FYI, order down one of those buttfuck rookies in the back. You want your good pilots going out, but this guy's just like, shoot when I say so. Has he almost landed? Shoot now! <laughs> <laughs> Give me your best pilot. I need him to land so I can take over. No, dude. No. After Doug shoots down Nakesh, he, they see a squadron of American F-16s arrive, and they escort Doug out of hostile territory. Doug asks them to take up a, a missing man formation for Chappie, which they do. Cut to back in the United States, Doug goes into a military hearing to answer questions for stealing the plane and taking on an unauthorized mission with Chappie, who, yep. by the way, is also there after being rescued. Chappie testifies, saying that he helped Doug. Doug also needs to learn discipline and to shut his mouth, which is a condition of Doug's release. Because Doug is being released because they don't want the word to get out. You know how you don't have the word come out? Put this son of a bitch in jail for 30 years. That's how the word doesn't come out. But yeah. this is a condition of his release, whatever. He's, he suggests, Chappie does, that letting him into the Air Academy would be the best place for him to learn where to shut his mouth and learn some discipline. And the commander agrees and endorses Doug's application to get him into the fucking Air Force. So all this... So you've got these two stolen planes. You've got all of this information that has been stolen from the U.S. military. The, like the slew of charges that this son of a bitch, whether he successfully saved. Also, the inner, not only the national laws that were broken, the international laws that were broken during this. Have you any idea of the consequences of your actions? Yeah, no, this this kid's being brought up on war crimes. Yes! Uh, the, the UN is convening and completely condemning the United States at this point. I mean, the, the investigations alone into the little rascals and them being able to convince all of their now-imprisoned fathers to, yes. give the, to do shit to steal this information. I just, this Air Force base is closed. <laughs> The uh, the Chappie and fucking Doug are being charged for war crimes at yep. this point. Um, again, there are sanctions being imposed against the United States right now. Like the the again slew, as you said, of shitstorm that is coming down on us from different areas is not even funny because again, an eighteen year old shithead who couldn't make it into the Air Force Academy to begin with, decided to steal an airplane and go rescue his dad. Not an entire troop. This isn't Captain America who saved a platoon of people. You know what I mean? This isn't like an entire... He didn't convince the Air Force to go and do something about this. Yeah. He just said, fuck everything. I'm doing this. Yes. And made an asshole out of the United States Air Force and completely destroyed the nation's, uh, again, that's the name of the country, the nation, uh, uh, not only their oil supply, but their entire economic being. Yes. Not only there, there are no repercussions. It ends with a goddamn parade welcoming 10 masters back home. Well, and here's what I want to know is if you're trying to keep a secret... Why would you throw a parade? Because the the press at no time. Yes. At, at least as far as we're concerned, the press is never told about him being shot down, about him being in prison. There's no word of that being the press isn't on the base. Nobody's trying to interview Doug the numerous times yep. he's off base after this happens. Yep. Why would they throw a phone? The guy got fucking shot down in a training accident. His fucking plane malfunctioned. There yeah. shouldn't be a welcome home parade. Yes. The little rascals should all be shot and buried in unmarked graves well, somewhere. The, because they know too much. I was going to say, the fact that, A, 
it's only Chappie and Doug that are on, that are on trial here. Yeah. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the rest of this freaking hodgepodge misfit toy crew was in on this, right? Oh, totally. They're worried about Doug saying something. You know, the guy who did all of it, they're worried about him. Not yeah. the other six people that ha- all the other accomplices in this goddamn mastermind crime, this yep. international crime spree that they went on. They're not worried about them. Those are the guys that you got to worry about. And during this like little parade welcome home thing, they're like hugging. They're like, I can't believe we got away with. Yeah, you, can't actually- tr- you can't trust teenage white kids to keep their mouth shut about anything. Fuck no. Can you imagine if they had Twitter at this point in time? <laughs> YOLO, going to bomb the nation. Selfie time. <laughs> Selfie from the cockpit. Oh my god, I'm making a face. Like one big nose, delete, oh, delete it. it. With this, this movie is ridiculous. This movie does not stand the test of time. The acting no. is actually really good. I mean, that's the one. Oh, like, yeah. Bright no, spot. no. There's um, there's there's a few bright spots. The plot sucks. Yeah. The script sucks. Um, it doesn't yeah. hold up. It doesn't stand the test of time. Um, but there's literally a hundred to anywhere from a hundred to a thousand other movies that are like war movies. You know, yay, America that I would recommend that are way better movies than oh. this could ever dream of being fuck yeah because this is barely barely a yay america this is almost a <laughs> i guess well that's that's what made because, me laugh because of yeah. all the shit we talked about and at the end you're supposed to be like yay america and i was like really no yeah <laughs> that's not there like america looks like an asshole and not in like the not in like our typical asshole way where we're like yeah. bullying other people. Like we look inept. I was gonna say it we look like incompetent assholes. Yeah, exactly. We're the guy fucking trying to pull on the door that says push. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's that is literally <laughs> the best way to describe <laughs> this. That's all okay. it is. Because this is li- this is just a little bit piece from five to ten different movies smushed into one and they tried to make it good and listen i know we could shit on the movie all day i know there's people out there like it fine good for you they lit how i saw up to four of these on amazon when i was looking i don't know if there's more again i didn't do any research on this because i do not care but no i saw Iron, I typed in Iron Eagle and Iron Eagle 4. Okay, I was like, how did they get four out of this? Yeah. That's insanity to me. And That's it could nuts. have gotten better because I never heard of the other ones. I, <laughs> I remember Iron Eagle 2 being a, a thing. Yeah. But that was it. Um, I'm pretty sure Lou Gossett Jr. was in all four of these. He's definitely on the on the cover of all four of them. <laughs> so. That's, hey, well, man, that's all I that's all I saw. The money's the good, cover. Fuck it. You just got to say the words on the page, buddy. That's I it. agree. I agree. Dude, ask and Robert De Niro. Way, he's thank been God. <laughs> he's been doing shitty movies for a while. Yeah, no shit. Um, thank God Lewis Gossett Jr. was in this movie because yes. I couldn't imagine it even being mildly entertaining without him. He is, he's the best part of almost any movie he's in. And yeah. if you are uh, looking for a Lewis Gossett Jr. movie that is really good, I highly suggest Diggs Tale. He is phenomenal in that movie. Yes, yes, yes. You got to put up a crazy ass Jimmy Jimmy Woods, but I mean, it's not like Twitter Jim Woods. It's me. He's acting, so it's tolerable. You ain't ready for shit, boy. Wait, well, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1986's Iron Eagle.